outside Aubrey Allen's house here in Scottsdale and she is the first winner of the Kitchen and Pantry Detox Makeover. She is a self-proclaimed 7 out of 10 clean eater. She's got some really specific health goals. She's already working out. She's, uh, she's really um, committed to her physical fitness in the gym. But she's seeing some um, frustrations around being able to lose a little bit of that stubborn fat, especially around the belly area. And um, so we're gonna see, she's gonna give me a run for my money because she's already somewhat of a clean eater, but I'm determined to find some strategies that I know are gonna help her achieve her goals quicker. So let's find out. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Are you ready to start? Yes. We'll see let's what see. you find today. All right. <laughs> So I'm here with Aubrey for the Kitchen and Pantry Detox Makeover, and we're gonna be helping her clean up and detox her, the toxins that are in her food supply a little bit so she can help reach some of her goals a little bit better. So just as a recap, Aubrey, you were saying that um, you you work out, you really, you rated yourself on a scale of uh, clean, uh, clean eating from a, as a seven, right? Yes. So the number one thing that made you sort of want to submit to win this makeover was what? Um, just help with like meal prepping, uh, making myself feel better, gut health, and then really knowing the social situation, so eating out okay. and what to do then. Yes, Aubrey has stated that you know she tries to eat really healthy, she's putting in a really valid effort on her physical level, she works out a lot. Um, so it's hard for her sometimes to figure out how to eat healthy when she's dining out, especially with friends in the social setting, which I can totally relate to because that was me times 10 when I was going through a lot of gut health issues and things like that. Um, and also, I think you stated that you had maybe a little bit, like I can relate to this as well, we have a little bit of stubborn fat sometimes that we can't seem to lose even though we're doing everything that we know yes. we think we should be doing. <laughs> so that's another thing I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to shed a little bit of light on today just to help make that journey a little easier. Awesome. Perfect. Let's do it. Have, you, <laughs> have you committed to tossing anything that doesn't make the cut? Yes. All right, perfect. <laughs> Just making sure because, you know, sometimes people get a little attached to some of the things that that they want. I can so see that. <laughs> okay, so just for the record, I've never been in Aubrey's kitchen before, so I don't know if she actually cleansed any of this before I got here to try that. <laughs> Did you? No, okay. but I am a single person, so I don't okay. I have a ton. <laughs> start from let me take a little assessment here what's going on okay and um, so meal prepping and meal planning the main thing I think you stated was that you get bored a little bit with eating the same things yes that's okay and that's something that you know behind the scenes over there the camera lady with busy fit girl is that busy girls fit life busy, busy girls fit life I'm sorry she's all about um, meal prepping and things like also, that so she's gonna be able to offer some really good advice um, okay, so let's just get started with some basics on clean eating. So the first thing that you want to understand is that we want to eat as many whole foods the way nature intended it, um, it a whole food state, you know, so less processed. So we try to switch people from standard American diet, which is a lot of processed foods that are high in sugar, fat, and sodium, yeah. to foods that are... Um, that are unprocessed or minimally processed because even olive oil is processed so it's not like we're trying to get like a hundred percent unprocessed although that is great if you can do that but we want to eliminate as many of the processed foods as possible and and when we are eating foods that are processed we want to make sure that we understand what the ingredients are that they come from a non-toxic source and so um, we're switching to soul food which stands for seasonal organic unprocessed and local okay are you aware why you'd want to eat local versus whenever you can? Are you aware why that would be more beneficial? Uh, maybe just less transportation to us. Yeah. Less toxins in yeah. the trucks and things. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Take it. Yeah, go ahead and see if that's something. Yeah, you're exactly right. So, um, so when something's more local, it also has, you know, the transit time is a lot lower. And when you're supporting your local farmers, they're usually also using sustainable practices, which means healthier soil and higher nutrients too, because there's less time between the time it's grown to the time it gets on your plate. 
Awesome. So there's all sorts of opportunities for you to eat local through like CSA programs and things like that or just stopping by your local farmer's market to swap out some of the things that you would normally get that are being shipped in from like Mexico or other places where you can get things that are literally grown here in Arizona from some of the farms around town. Okay. And you'll see that that's also a trending thing when you go out and dine in restaurants because um, a lot of those restaurants are now starting to support the local farm community by sourcing seasonal ingredients. Okay. So the other reason it's sort of important is because our body's on a natural rhythm and when we eat with what's what's current within the season, we're eating foods that our body's naturally craving for that period of time. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That's so cool. There's an intuitive <laughs> level of yeah. eating that helps you align more with your own natural body rhythms. Okay. Okay. So the one thing that I gathered, okay, so let's see what these are. Okay. So first we're going to go through this. These are strawberries. Organic. Probably not. Okay, so first things first is we are gonna wanna cut down on the pesticide and herbicide content. Okay. And so you are able to reduce your pesticide and herbicides by over 80% by eliminating just the food of what they call on Environmental Working Group's website. I'll send you the link and it's okay. gonna be the Clean 15 is what you're gonna wanna eat organic for sure. Okay. Then there's the Dirty Dozen, which are the ones that are the more toxic ones. I mean. The clean 15 you're okay, to, sorry, I reversed that. The clean 15 you're okay to eat as is. Okay. The dirty dozen are the ones, which is more now like the dirty 15 almost, are the ones you're gonna wanna eat organic. Oh, okay. So for example, like avocados and things like that, uh, avocados is one where it's an example, it doesn't have to necessarily be organic. Okay. So that saves on your budget. Yeah. Um, but berries and greens, especially, berries and greens are highly pesticide sprayed foods. Okay. And herbicides and insecticides. So berries um, and greens, and I'll give you that whole list, but if you can eat from the Clean 15 and avoid the Dirty Dozen and buy only those organic, if you're on a budget, which a lot of us are, then you're gonna, you're gonna be able to greatly reduce your pesticide and herbicide content. Awesome, great. Okay. So, let's see what this is. So are you, non, are you dairy free? I or don't eat a lot of dairy, no. You don't eat a lot of dairy, but you do sometimes. I mean, I'm not like lactose intolerant or anything. Okay, so I can. You but can, but you choose not to? Yeah. Okay, so the thing I like about this is it's non-dairy because dairy is actually yeah, pretty inflammatory for a lot of people, and um, it can be it can be toxic if you're not buying the right dairy. Um, but this is non-GMO, so that's good. You're already um, so no genetically modified ingredients because when we're looking at the ingredients, we're looking at okay, so it's purified water, coconut cream. Almonds. The thing that scares me is the natural flavors because what natural flavors really means is about 50 ingredients that are chemically processed and they don't have to necessarily disclose them because the labeling, um, the labeling, um, what's the word I'm Lons. looking for? Labeling laws, thank you. <laughs> labeling laws don't require it. So basically it's a really sneaky way for companies to put um, a bunch of, a shit ton of ingredients on your label without you recognizing it. Okay. And they hide it under the word natural so it sounds healthier when in actuality the word natural is not a regulated term. Right. So someone can put healthy or natural on the front end of the label all they want. The proof is in the ingredients and they try to hide it that way. Okay. So what I always teach people is the front is marketing. Right. The back, the, where the ingredients is where you want to focus. Okay. Because the front can say healthy. Right. It can say <laughs> ma naturally made. It can say made and, you know, naturally sourced. It could say all sorts of things that are not regulated, appearing healthy. Yeah. When in actuality it's not. So Capri Suns, for example, that are given to kids <laughs> that are made to look like naturally flavored fruit juices are nothing but GMOs and toxic carcinogens. Mm. But it looks like a healthy treat uh, the way they do up the packaging. Right. So avoid, so packaging, the first thing you should do is I want you to, I'm not a skeptic by nature, but when it comes to food labeling and food packaging, I'm a huge skeptic. Like you gotta put on your, in, you know, you gotta read okay. back. So um, now one of the things that that would, um, because it's non-GMO verified, we already, we know that none of the natural flavors, they shouldn't be, they should be non-GMO. In order to get that label. Okay. Um, so let's see, green grass fruits. Okay, so no added sugar, no cur curry. I don't know how to say this word. I always pronounce it wrong. Curagenin. I always forget how to say that, but that's good. That's like that's a neurotoxin, and that's usually found in boxed uh, nut milks. Oh. So when you there's look for there. there's another one. <laughs> okay, let's check it out. Let's check it out. Okay, so. Um, 
organic almonds, good, you know what that is, vitamin and mineral blend, okay. There is no, there is no creatinine in this either. Oh, good. So that's good. Um, no added sugar. And they're starting to put that on the labels because people are starting to wise up to the fact that it's an ingredient that doesn't need to be in there. But it is typically found in a lot of boxed milk, so you'd have to read the label to make sure that you're not getting that. So soy-free, gluten-free, dairy and lactose-free, no added sugar, no saturated fat, cholesterol fee, no artificial colors or flavors. So see, no artificial colors or flavors. Um, that doesn't mean it doesn't have quote-unquote natural flavors. I would almost say because this one has natural flavors, you know, I would always go for the one that has the least amount of hidden ingredients. Okay. So, but those are pretty good choices overall. I just want you to be aware that that's something to look for. Okay. Okay. Um, especially, we're going to talk about soy. Because soy, I'm not I, I'm not 100% a, a hundred, a hundred against soy, but I am a, against GMO soy. And the way that they package, uh, the way that they process soy and they put... Um, We'll get to that, but uh, they put, it might be in your protein bar, I saw in the cabinet, like an increased amount of soy that's not naturally found, usually soy proteins and soy isolates. Okay. And how that might be affecting the, the um, stubborn fat gain or stubborn weight that we all try to lose, especially women. Right. So we're a lot, you know. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about that now because this is, is this your main water source? Not the dog's water. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you can use that. Okay, because I was going to say, okay, so... So we're just going to talk about this for a second. It's for the dog, but we're going to talk about it because it's coming you, in plastic. You can just say it's mine because okay. that, that teaches, right? Yeah, correct. <laughs> so we'll just say, if you have bottled water in your fridge like this, especially, what, be especially like up like, against a liquid like this, this um, the petrochemicals from the BPA and everything, that like this is made of plastic. Yeah. So this is all seeping into the water and then you're consuming it. And this is one of the largest sources of a BPA which is a xenoestrogen, so it basically mimics estrogen in your body. And then when you have a lot of extra estrogen in your body, it causes stubborn weight that can't yeah. be reduced. And uh, that's stubborn because you're, um, you're spiking the estrogen levels in your body so it thinks, but not naturally, we were spiking it with like fake estrogen. It basically mimics estrogen and attaches to your estrogen receptors. Okay. And then your natural body rhythms, your natural estrogen receptors can't do their job to regulate because it's being bombarded with xenoestrogens. So another form of xenoestrogen is soy, um, or too much soy will mimic, um, that's not a xeno, it's more of like a um, phytoestrogen or whatever, it, um, soy will mimic estrogen in the body. Especially if it's like concentrated high doses of soy, which okay. is when you see soy protein and soy isolate on the labels. Yeah. So not so much like maybe edamame that comes in a natural state where you're getting natural doses of it. Yeah. Again, going back to you want whatever's found in nature as much as possible. Oh yeah, there's another one. Okay. <laughs> so this is organic almonds, organic vanilla flavor, sea salt, sunflower, organic locust bean. So this one is all organic. Um... Is it all organic or just organic unsweet? Yes, it's USDA organic. So it's got, there's four different levels of organic. So this one is the highest level of organic. Okay. So um, this one does not have the Seneca, uh, the uh, carinogen in it. Um, do you use these for smoothies mainly? Yeah. Okay. Or for chicken broth. Yeah. And then chicken broth. Okay. Chicken fat free broth. All right, so this is probably going to have a lot of the sodium in it. This has 860 milligrams of sodium per serving. So that's a lot of sodium, and what sodium is going to make us store a lot of water weight. Yeah. And it's really, uh, and also at the same time, it's coming from a source of, um, what source is it? I usually always try to get free range um, chicken. So okay. And my whole school of thought is the way that the animals are raised also, if you have a stress, if, when cortisol is being released in the bodies of animals, at the same time, you're then consuming that. So that's what happens when we eat a lot of the processed meats and stuff. The animals are kept in very small cages, they're stressed out, they're right. being pumped full of cortisol and hormones, and then on top of that, we're eating it. So yeah. if you can opt for um, free range or cage uh, chicken broth, is am I saying that right? Free range? Um, mm -hmm to um, cage free cage free chicken broth and and organic as much as possible yeah okay all right and this is just cucumbers well vinegar sea salt 
Okay, sodium benzoate, preservatives, natural flavors again, and then polysorbate, and then we're adding um, colorings. So it is gluten-free, which is good for a lot of people. It's not GMO. There's no high fructose corn syrup. Um, and it's saying um, no yellow number five. So they removed the yellow number five. They do have sodium benzoate. So what I have is, uh, I have a clean eating guide that I'll be giving you after this that will give yeah. you like, descriptions of like awesome. some of these chemicals. So you're not gonna have to try to remember all this. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> but um, anytime you can avoid extra added preservatives and again, natural flavors, you're gonna yeah. wanna avoid those because that's just replacing in your mind natural flavors with like 50 chemicals that you don't know, that okay. they don't have to disclose. Okay, and let's see here. Water, tomato paste. Okay, so this is a really good example. So fat-free pizza sauce from Trader Joe's. How many people think Trader Joe's is super healthy? 20, you know, all the Everyone. Time. <laughs> Everyone thinks Trader Joe's is healthy. I shop at Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Sprouts, and even the stuff at Whole Foods is not healthy. I'm just closing this so I don't like waste all your Yeah, you're good. <laughs> so um, this is a perfect example. When we're talking about like GMOs, um, the top GMO sources, and do you know what a GM, GMO is? Genetically modified Okay, something. <laughs> Genetically modified organism. And so depending, <laughs> depending on how they modify it, um, sometimes they're actually spliced with the same genes that um, kill bacteria, such as soy. So it can actually upset the gut flora balance in your digestive system because your digestion, bacteria gets a bad rap. You actually need good bacteria in your body in order to function properly. Right. So if you're eating foods that are a natural pesticide, what do you think that would do to your gut flora? Yeah. Not good. So, let's see here. So, one of the first ingredients is modified cornstarch. So, the main GMOs, um, GMO modified foods, even if you're trying to eat whole food, are um, corn, sugar from sugar beets, which is about 85 to 90% of the sugar in the population. So, not coconut sugar, not cane sugar, but specifically sugar beets. Okay. If something says sugar on the label, you can just assume that it's sugar beets. Okay. As it would say sugar cane or it would say, um, coconut sugar or something like that okay if it says organic then it's and it's a, that, that's a little questionable to me but if it says organic it's not allowed to have GMOs in it okay but um, corn starch so any derivative of corn any derivative of sugar any derivative of canola any derivative of soy any derivative of cotton those are the big ones there's also yellow crooked neck squash Hawaiian papaya and they're starting to splice it's hard to keep up because they're doing tests on all sorts of stuff. They're starting to want to, you know, splice salmon genes and their apples and, and all yeah. sorts of stuff. But modified cornstarch is a derivative of the GMO corn. And then the next ingredient, because the ingredients are always listed in the highest concentration to the least. Okay. So were you aware of that? Yeah. Okay. Good so the, the highest ingredient is water. Okay. And the lowest ingredient is garlic powder. Okay, so modified cornstarch is one, right after tomato paste, that's like the next ingredient. And then following that is salt, and then following that is sugar. Sugar is another non-GMO, or a, another highly gener um, genetically modified ingredient. So, and it specifically says just sugar. So we're gonna say that this has to go because this is not only, um, and it's coming from Trader Joe's, you guys, so it's something that you, a lot of people wouldn't expect, but this one definitely has to go because it's got too many GM, it's got GMO ingredients in it and um, and that's really the main thing. If, if this were to say just tomatoes, garlic, pepper, oregano, onion powder, just like Italian seasonings and tomatoes and things like that, and it didn't have these extra things, it would be perfect. Okay. It'd be good. Okay. It'd be a processed food, technically, right. it's sort of, you know, it's, yeah. like, it's like a hybrid, it's sort of like a whole food, but it's just, you know, tomatoes and herbs. You could easily make it at home from scratch just by squashing up some tomatoes and adding seasoning. But, um, but yeah, it's gonna, we're gonna just toss that one because it's sort of like, and it's trying to trick you because I, this is why I have a problem. I emailed Trader Joe's about this a couple of times too, <laughs> because they actually, you know, I, you know, cause they'll put GMO or they'll put, you know, organic or something, they'll put something on their label. Oh, they say that they claim that there's no GMOs in any of their food, in any of their Trader Joe labels. Oh. So technically, according to Trader Joe's and their representatives, this should be safe to eat. There's n absolutely no way that I buy that because when I emailed them and said, where's, how much testing do you do on the products before you, and they don't. Yeah. So they don't disclose where they do their testing or how they do their testing or anything like that. Okay. The one company that does is 
this one that you can trust is the non-GMO project here. Okay. They, they're a third party, third neutral party. Okay. So they're constantly investigating foods and putting their label on only foods that make the cut. Oh, okay. So anytime you see that, you're in the clear All right. as far as GMOs. And you know, for people that aren't aware of what GMOs are, it's, um, you know, you're basically like a human lab rat at the moment. They've introduced into the system mainly in 1996. And then they started to get into the population into our food supply. So um, really we're like the first generation. Our kids, I'm 40, so it's like our kids and young, you know, everybody that's my age that has kids and then like younger, yeah. are the first few generations that are being grown up on the food. And I think we can see what's happening with kids yeah. and, and the obesity epidemic and things like that and like spiked allergies and all, you know what I mean? Like there's yeah. so much stuff going on. But the main thing that, you know, our food supply has shifted a lot. It's not the same food supply that our grandparents grew up with. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's sort of, I don't know where I was going with that, but does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Minute Maid orange juice, 100% juice. I'm going to recommend it. It's been in my fridge for like months. Okay, good. Because this one is. Um, Somebody brought it from the airplane. Look at you backpedaling. <laughs> no, seriously. Not even I. It's been there since October. Okay, good. Because one rule of thumb is 34 grams of sugar. Yeah. That's the equivalent of two Snicker bars. And, and drinking, I always have a rule of like drinking. Drinking your There's sugar. There's one I do drink in there. Drinking your sugar is just like, as far as weight management, if you do have an issue with holding weight management, which I've had, I noticed that first off, your body can only handle so much fructose at a time, and second, the sugar at the same time is super high. So it's like you're using up a lot, like one little, bit, you're done. Yeah. Like, okay. That's it. But okay. think about if you have that and then you go about your day and you eat whatever else you eat throughout the day. Right. Your spike, and it also, there's no pulp with this, so it's really spiking your glucose levels really quickly because you're not having the extra fiber with it a lot as well to digest the sugar. Okay. To slow it down. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. When it's found in its whole food form with the fiber and the pulp and everything, and you eat an orange like plain, you're eating a much, you know what I mean? It's totally different. Yeah. So this is like spiking. A lot of people don't recognize that fructose is sweeter than regular sugar and actually different than sugar in the way that it is processed by the liver. Okay. So regular sugar is absorbed into your bloodstream. Yeah. Um, fructose is actually processed by your liver, and your liver is the number one organ that detoxes your body, and is also re responsible for fat metabolism. And so, it's just um, it's processed completely different. And I and I've had oh, there's actually some pulp in this. So um, there's pulp in that. It's not just like straight juicing. Um, I used to have an issue with fat, um, with having too much fructose in my diet. I was having like even with the whole fruit, like adding lots of mangoes and high fructose foods to my smoothies and stuff like that. Yeah. And I noticed my body could only metabolize so much fructose in like one day. Yeah. And the result was it was giving me a lot of belly fat. It was giving me a lot of bloating. And it was giving me a lot of like um, extra water uh, retention in the midsection area. Okay. So it was really interesting to have. Okay, so this is chili garlic sauce mm -hmm. um, chili salt garlic distilled vinegar potassium sorbate and sodium bisulfate preservatives this is not something that's going to make the cut because of the extra sodium and salt uh, because of the preservatives are you okay with throwing this out and replacing it with something healthier sure you are okay all right so we're going to toss that miracle whip Okay, so we're going to let you read the first ingredients of this. <laughs> All right, water, vinegar, soybean oil, modified food starch, high fructose corn syrup, mm -hmm. sugar, mm -hmm. salt, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and then we get into a lot more. <laughs> and then we get into a lot more. Um, and what's that one? Natural flavor. Natural flavors. <laughs> and what's that one? Um sorbet as a preservative as a preservative and then I think we also have is that the new way to say aspartame is that the new way to say aspartame did they switch it because they switched the name to say aspartame oh, that's they, a new one they changed the name up for aspartame quite they a bit like people 20 should... different names for it just to keep disguising it and yeah people. so as soon as you're on to one <laughs> I thought that that might be one of the new ways to say aspartame it could be how much sugar does it say it has in it probably so, a lot um Probably not that much. If oh, it doesn't, less, then. Less than one gram. So yeah, that might be fake sugar. Yeah, so. 
Okay. So are you okay with tossing this to find a healthy mm -hmm. version? Okay. Because it's really about like all of these, and I know this is like a specialty item, so I don't know if you necessarily want to, this one isn't probably, you know, this one you might want to hold on to because it's a total specialty item, but I'm saying if you want to completely clean it out, these are all replaceable with things that are healthier versions. So it's not like you have to live without any of these. Right. You can still make a sandwich and have mayo on it, but there's healthy versions of mayo. Yeah. You so, so now that you know what to look for, you're going to be able to see that this is the most ingredient is uh, GMO soy, followed by modified stu food starch, um, and then high fructose current corn syrup, which is GMO corn on steroids, yeah. basically. And then sugar, another GMO. It basically looks like a lot of baby food formulas. Really? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I've seen a lot of baby food formulas with worse ingredients than that on the, on the ingredient label. Yeah. And they wonder why the kids are sick. Yeah, so let's see. Organic multi-grain bread, USA Organic. Okay, so if you're okay, yeah, that's good. So, we're gonna, you don't have a lot in your fridge. Okay, so <laughs> so now you have some packaged foods. We'll get to this, I just, everything else yeah. looks here. So Those are meal prepped. Yeah. So you're eating carrots. Obviously, anytime you can switch to organic um, produce is gonna be better. Yeah. Celery, again, celery is something you're gonna wanna buy organic. Yes. Um, and then, what are all these packaged foods? These are your meal. Do you have a delivery service? No, I did them. Oh, you did them? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's in this? Is this turkey? Yes. Ground turkey? Yes. Is it um, organic turkey? Yes. 99% fat free. Okay, well, that's okay. You can, the, but it's organic turkey? Yes. Okay. And then these are organic turkey? Yeah, that's the same thing. Oh, it's the same thing? <laughs> okay. Um, so you're making your meal, so it looks like you have a good meal prep strategy going on. Are you just getting used to the same foods over yeah. and over again? Okay. And right. sometimes I don't have time to do it all. Okay. Like, uh, there are some weeks when I, yes, can do, like, all the grocery shopping and then have time to do all the food prep. Uh-huh. But then there's other weeks, and that's, those are the weeks that I struggle and I don't have time to, like, have it all in the fridge. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're going to um, have a little surprise for you that's going to help you with that. Beautiful. All right, so organic avocados, organic dehydrated onion, organic distilled vinegar. Okay, these are okay. It's all organic. Um, all right, so let me just explain a little bit. What is this? This is Trader Joe's cheese. Mm -hmm. Milk from cows not treated with RBST. Okay. Skim milk. Vegetables, rennet, potato starch, corn starch, calcium, <laughs> calcium sulfate. <laughs> we gotta get a garbage bag. We have a <laughs> So, grass fed, um, these are coming from cows. I would always recommend if you can buy more like, grass fed uh, dairy. Okay. Because they're, they're, they're. If I do, because I don't buy a lot. Yeah, if you do. Or you can switch to a non dairy alternative if you don't want the dairy. Some people are lactose intolerant. I'm, I know that I get lactose intolerant, so. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna buy dairy, the best kind to buy would be um, grass-fed dairy. Okay. That's not raised on a farm, factory farm. It's being pumped full of all different kinds of antibiotics right. and hormones to mass-produce milk, basically. Because right. that's what these cows are doing. They're being fed a bunch of hormones to grow really fast. And what happens is they get so sick that then they have to be injected with antibiotics to sterilize everything mm -hmm. in order for it to be ready for human consumption. Yeah. So which I wouldn't consume it. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just, you're passing all that through to your system. So you literally are what you eat, basically. Okay. Okay. Um, what do you think, so, what do you think I would say about those? Buy them organic. <laughs> yeah, those are buy them organic. <laughs> yeah. Because they're highly pesticide sprayed food. Right. So, okay. so um, I'm going to set those right there because that's at least fresh produce and that's better than... Okay, so now we're going to get to some of the processed foods here. This, I've seen this before. Let's see, this is Trader Joe's hummus. Yes. Garbanzo beans, water, tahini, oil blend. So what you're going to want to look at, it, it's up to you. You can do your own homework. I don't buy that Trader Joe's has researched and or test their product. And the main oil blend is canola versus just a healthy olive oil. So you could make your own or look for um, uh, hummus that just has olive oil in it or some kind of oil that's not canola um, or it has to say organic, USDA organic to show that it's coming from a non-organic oil uh, or a non-GMO source. Okay. Okay. So are you okay with tossing this? So again, another Trader Joe item going in the trash. <laughs> so this one is 
probably loaded with preservatives. I can't see an ingredient label on it. This is just processed okay. ham. It's probably really high in sodium and it's really high in preservatives. Are you, are you attached to this? No. Okay. All right. The rest of that looks okay. And then we're gonna get to, okay. Pink pepper, vinegar, salt, soybean oil. That's loaded with GMOs. Dang, this one's good. This, one, this is your natural soy salsa alternative. This is a good soy salsa alternative that you can use. Um, you like this wing sauce? I just like buffalo sauce. <laughs> buffalo sauce? Well, it's got, yeah, it's got loaded with soy, natural flavors, artificial flavors, um, GMO soy, hydrogenated soybean oil. Oh, I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't take away your sauce. I know. We'll find it. I'm going to tell healthy <laughs> substitutions. But this is um, natural soy sauce alternative, so that's good. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what happens with the estrogen once it gets into your body. If you're having an abundance of like soy in your system, it's mimicking the estrogen. And then naturally your body wants to break down the estrogen and um, it does that in the liver. Okay. And then the liver sends it to the colon to be removed. But what happens is if you're bombarding your system with pesticides, herbicides, BPA, and other toxins, your liver's constantly working 24 seven to rid your body of the toxins and not able to do its job. And then your body's reabsorbing the, un the unbroken down estrogen. Okay. That's what happens, like the first phase of estrogen, what we call estrogen dominance. And that's a lot of like an epidemic that happens with women um, when they start, um, uh, they can't lose weight easily. Okay. That's one of the causes. Um, the other way your body, so, so there's usually some kind of thing where there's an over toxic load that's hindering the, the liver from the ability to get rid of the excess hormones, especially if you're on birth control pills, especially if you eat hormone meat, especially all of those things are like adding fuel to the fire. Your body needs to naturally de uh, detox that. Okay. If it can't detox it in the liver, then you reabsorb that estrogen. And or if you're used to eating a lot of meat and processed foods and not a lot of high fiber foods like fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, and things like flaxseed and stuff like that, then you're going to have a problem excreting it through the colon through your bowel movements. And so then it will be reabsorbed in th through, uh, through the colon that way. Okay. So your body will just keep reabsorbing the estrogen. And then it becomes a vicious cycle because the estrogen spikes. It's now disproportionate with the progesterone levels. And so that tells your body um, that you have estrogen dominance. And it starts a vicious cycle because it makes the fat harder to lose. And the fat actually then creates more estrogen. So then you're like in a loop. Right. So that's what happens. And I went through that personally because I was had to detox all of the estrogen from my system from previously being on birth control pills. Yeah. And it um, and had to start with doing a liver cleanse and eliminating the toxins and eliminating all of the things that were hindering my liver from optimizing functionality. Okay. Including fat burning is one of the things that liver is responsible for helping burn fat, fat metabolism, lipid okay. metabolism. So it all sort of ties together. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good for there. The rest of this is fruits and vegetables. Yeah. What I'm going to say is obviously you want to buy those organic. Yeah. As much as possible. And you know, celery organic is cheap. Carrots are organic is cheap. Peppers you can always find on sale is cheap. Right. Um, if I'm going to give you that list for the clean 15 and the dirty dozen so you can be optimizing your budget and making sure that if you don't want to buy something that's organic, at least make it on the clean 15 list because okay. they're already going to not be harmful for you. Okay. Um, and so this is where a lot of people get in trouble because they, this is more processed. You can, everything in the pantry. So we're right. just going to do a quick look at this. Um, I, I buy these. These are, these are good. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at the protein bar because a lot of people grab protein bars when they're on a quick, like little fix and they yeah. want something quick to go. So, oh, this is already open. Okay. Um, whey protein isolate, milk protein isolate, natural flavors, soy, soy lecithin. <laughs> so anytime you see the word isolate, yeah, um, what that means is they've extracted the protein from it and it's un, and it's like, it's like an unnatural dose of that protein. Okay. So when you see soy isolate or, and, and some people are sensitive to whey and things like that, but if you're not, then you're not. But, um, it's got the cornstarch in it, and it's got the soy in it, it's got the natural flavors in it. It's, is it organic? Is it, is it not Probably not. <laughs> so then all of those things would be, that one 
it's gluten free, but that's a gluten free thing is like sort of like people hopped on the gluten free labeling bandwagon because they knew consumers were, it became really hot like five or ten right. years ago or whatever. And so they start labeling everything gluten free, even things that normally wouldn't have gluten in it at all, just to hype up the marketing on the front of the container to get people to buy it, even right. the back of it. Because remember, you always want to look at the packaging. The front is marketing, half of it's bullshit. <laughs> you flip it around and read the ingredients, and that's when you'll learn what's really in there. Okay. So you got um, whole grain oats, so perfect. You know what it is? One ingredient, um, hemp seeds. So your your processed foods, like your semi-processed foods and your things in your in your pantry are overall pretty good. Organic PB fit peanut butter. So this is organic, non-GMO. Let me see what's the ingredients. I've had this before too. Yeah. And it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. And it's got palm sugar. So that's better than just saying sugar. Oh, okay. If that said sugar, I wouldn't buy it. Okay. Although I would maybe consider it because it says organic, so Okay. The reason it's organic is because they didn't use regular, if they would have used regular sugar, they wouldn't have that label on it. Okay. They wouldn't be allowed. Okay. Because it would be GMO sugar. Okay. So when you see the words corn, sugar, canola, what am I missing? Corn, sugar, canola, the main one that's in your food, sometimes cottonseed oils in your food. So corn, sugar, canola, cotton, and soy. Soy, the big one. Those are the ones that should give out you a big, thank you, Megan. <laughs> um, <laughs> That, those are the ones that should give you like bells. Like you okay. need to see the organic label or you need to see the non-GMO project verified label. Okay. In order to buy those ingredients. Okay. And if you don't want to be doing a disservice to your gut flora balance. And also um, the studies, ooh, look. I know. <laughs> <laughs> she found another one. <laughs> All right, so this one's artificial flavor. I don't, I, this one is all just artificial. Let's see what's in this, because this is just for fun. Corn, aspartame. Aspartame has like 50 different ways to say it. Um, artificial flavor, and it, yeah, it does. It has that other, that red 40. Yeah, so these are, there's healthier versions of Jello, but that one's definitely a toxic one. Okay, so. We're almost done because you don't really have that much more to go. Okay, so this is another BPA source. So you want to buy any, um, I always look if I buy cans for a BPA free liner okay. in the cans. Um, you can find tuna in a BPA free liner. Um, just know that, um, oh, here we go. Perfect example. Okay. So I don't. Did you, did you recognize that when you're buying it? No. Okay, so non-BPA lining is on the label. Okay. Which is what you're normally gonna find. Never fi actually even seen that. Yeah, and so this is the same BPA and, and the things that you're getting from your plastic is gonna be in the lining of your cans. And so when it's another source of a xenoestrogen, it's another source to upset your endocrine system and upset the natural balance of your hormones. And then it causes that vicious cycle with toxicity for the liver, cleansing of your body, okay. cleansing the toxins, upsetting your fat burning abilities and everything like that because, because these things are floating around in your system. Okay. So when you buy canned food, always, if you are going to buy canned food, opt for the BPA liner. Thank okay. you, Megan. So are you okay with tossing the stuff that didn't make the cut? Yeah. Okay. All right, and then we're almost done. Okay, I'll make recommendations. I know these are pricey, so then you can know when to, what to look for in the next time if this has anything in it. Sure. So brown rice, pumpkins, protein, protein coconut oil. This one has natural flavors. Um, other than that, this one looks really clean because there's a lot of protein powders out there that are, and protein bars and stuff like that that are just gonna have a laundry list of things. The rule of thumb is, like you want to be able to know what the ingredients are. Yeah, okay. And you want to make sure that they just don't sound like they were made in a lab. Right, okay. So the main thing to also understand if you're watching this on a, the video is that there are people play, pay big bucks to sit in a lab and make chemicals and figure out the exact formula to make your brain completely addicted to it. So you buy it like it's crack, basically. <laughs> like you become addicted to it. And they want to find <laughs> that perfect formula so you just keep buying, buying more and more and more of right. it. There's people that think that's all they get paid to do is to find that perfect formula to get your brain hooked. Um, uh, so things like the fruit juices or like, you know, the Capri Suns and all of that stuff, they all yeah. have a certain, like, what's the perfect sweetness level? What's the perfect this level? Like, what's everything chemically we can do to make the brain 
hooked on this. Right. So we keep buying. Keep okay. buying it. Yeah. yeah. They don't care that it's making people sick. Right. Then you get hooked on a healthcare system. Right. As your savior. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, so really what, the reason I like to do these, uh, these makeovers is to really help teach people how to become their own health advocate. Yeah. Because if you, it's more about prevention. Yeah. Because if you continue to make, and I'm not saying you in general, because you're really, you know, your diet's pretty clean compared to the average American diet. But if, you, if people continue to make these choices, then they're just digging themselves a hole and then they have no choice but to pop up later with, um, with a disease or an issue going on that they have to rely on the healthcare system to fix when it could have been preventative. So I see food as medicine and I see it as um, a way to, it's like my healthcare. Yeah, okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Because what you're, you're putting in your body is actually, you become what you eat. You think about it like your body's using all of, uh oh. <laughs> okay, so, okay, oh well, okay, so this one is, okay. So it's non-GMO and it's organic. So this is a good example because people want to buy cereals for their kids. Yeah. I would always opt to make like natural granola and things like that whenever you can pulse some nuts and some brown rice krispies and things and make a natural cereal very quickly. But if you were going to buy one, like the ingredients on here, there's no fructose corn syrup, there's no artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. Look at the first ingredients, corn, corn, cane, soy. So people are buying this non-organic, that's all they're eating is GMOs. That is all they're eating is GMOs if they're not buying right. the healthy version of this. And so at least this one is non-GMO and it's USDA organic. So as long as you're cool with eating soy and corn and, and those kind of things, for the most part, there's not too much other stuff in it. Okay. Um, but making one is like the better. Well, if you can make make any, you know, because it's, if you have a food processor, for example, I, when I was making my cereal, I would just throw some walnuts, throw some pumpkin seeds, get a bag of like puffed brown rice if I wanted to add a little crunchiness to it or something. Okay. Add a little cinnamon, add right. a little organic sugar or something like that, or maybe some diced up dates for sweetness or whatever okay. in moderation. Right. And just get creative with like a little healthy blend and pulse it in the pulser and then you're done. Right. So it's just a matter of buying some whole food things and pulsing it. You can easily make your own cereal at home. But if you're going to buy something, like I was just saying, this is a really good example for people watching at home that they're probably buying a version of this yeah. and they're spending 4 or $5 a box on, on a cereal because it's not cheap. No, no it's These not. are expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and their kids are getting nothing but GMOs. And then they're having all the issues yeah. as they get older and they don't realize it starts with like the choices like like this, just little choices. Okay. Okay, so I'm just using that as an example. That one can actually stay, because it, but it was a really good example. And see if there's any other examples, and then we're about <laughs> done, and then I can answer any questions that you have. Was this as bad as you were thinking? Or no, it's thinking? good. It's Is really good? informative. Okay, good. Okay. Food should be simple, made with ingredients from nature, without any artificial flavors. Agreed. So they, got, they have a good like motto for their thing. Let's see what their ingredients say. Okay, so pasture-raised part, sk part, skim, part skim cow's milk, cheese, cultures. All right. I agree with their, with their motto, <laughs> but I don't know what kind of milk they're using in right. this, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so open nature, there's nothing organic about it. It didn't come from grass-fed cows probably coming from cows that are pumped full of antibiotics and hormones um, and and then that's n no good right um, but it's made without ingredient it's made ingredients here's where they trick you made with ingredients from nature true remember nature is not a regulated term right so they can put all natural all they want on the front of the packaging right um, and without any artificial flavors it if it would have said um, and not made from sick cows that are pumped full of hormones, and we would, we would be okay with it. But we're okay. That's a perfect example of marketing. Yeah, perfect example of marketing. See how sneaky it is? Yeah. The average person trying to go shopping and trying to do good for themselves, trying would to buy it healthy, would buy this. Yeah. And think that they're doing a good thing for their family to come home and eat healthy. Meanwhile, this is disrupting your hormones, it's making people sick. It's right. messing with your liver, it's messing with, which, the, which then it just, if you can't detoxify your body, your liver is like a pool filter. Exactly. So what happens if your pool filter is all clogged up? That's what's happening to your body. That's the same thing that would happen to your pool if your pool filter is all clogged up. 
So this is really good, organic chia. It's also a really good source of fiber, which is going to like flaxseed is my favorite thing to add to smoothies, but stuff, anything added fiber that you can add to like your salads or smoothies or things like that is gonna help um, cleanse. Okay. So keep everything moving good. And couscous. Yeah, if, if you don't have a sensitivity to wheat, then that's fine, but wheat is a highly inflammatory food, so some people are sensitive to it, so it just depends. I have an allergy to wheat, so I steer clear of it, but that's the only ingredient on there. Okay, so. Um, and I'm sure wheat is, high, and wheat is highly processed, so I'm just, I, I should know more about wheat. I just always avoided it from the yeah. beginning just because I have an allergy, so it's like researching wheat has like fallen off my radar as much. Right. But, but the way wheat is processed can be, can be different. Um, all right, so this is probably just coming from no MSG, non-GMO. What do you use this for? Um, I used it with the Jello, actually. Oh, okay. Made like its own Jello. Uh huh. Gelatin. Can you use? Um, let me see what this is. It's just like a collagen protein. Okay. Yeah, collagen protein. Isn't that the same thing as sort of like a gelatin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They, so they just do something. Yeah. They yeah. just set up differently. They, okay. So this one is pasture raised. That's good. So pasture raised and grass fed. Mm -hmm. Is healthier than okay. than not. So like this is what we were talking about before about the like, milk and the cheese source and stuff like that. Okay. And like if this would have been like from that source. Um, okay. And I think that's about it. So as far as like food prepping, you what are your favorite meals to make? Um, I like comfort food, like for lunch normally. <laughs> so like spaghettis and mm -hmm. um, salads. Okay. Um, pizza. Yeah, you mentioned pizza. <laughs> so when you buy tacos, I love Mexican yeah. of any sort. So. so Megan just happens to have a cookbook called, Megan, what's the name of your cookbook? <laughs> Comfort food makeover. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> <laughs> yep, we got so, pizzas in there, pastas, all sorts of stuff. Awesome, so that's perfect. So, actually, for being such a good participant today, you're going to get a copy of that. Oh, Deliver thank to your you. home, so I'm going to order that for you. And you're going to get a copy of that. And I know you said one of your cheat things that you were worried about that I was going to toss out was what was your favorite little treat? Chocolate. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Okay, so I don't know. I didn't see any examples of your chocolate. That's because uh... <laughs> she ate it. So, so what I brought you is some like super dark chocolate. Oh, you know, awesome. You don't have to go to 90%. That's just okay. what I do. You can go, but anything above 80% is recommended. Okay. What you're going to notice on the back when you look at chocolate that's higher content, higher cacao, you're going to get better antioxidants. Okay. So it's going to be healthier for you. Um, and you're gonna see the sugar count go way down. Okay. A regular square of chocolate, if you were just buying like just dark chocolate without it being like even like maybe forty percent or fifty percent. Right. You're still gonna look at the back and it's gonna say like seventeen to twenty grams of sugar. Okay. So this dark chocolate, like your palate will start to adjust. Yeah. And you're only gonna get three grams of sugar per serving. Okay. And then when you go back and you try like regular chocolate, it's probably gonna taste really really sweet to you. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So this will be a way to. <laughs> right. Like I already can't do milk chocolate. Oh, just because it's too sweet now? Yeah, I, it's I too don't sweet. Like it. So good. So you're where you at now as far as like what level of dark chocolate do you have? Um, no, I don't know. I don't have like a you don't know. preference. You don't yeah. have a preference. So this will be a good one for you to sort of experiment. If it's a little bit too bitter for you at first, you can go drop down to like 85 or 75. Okay. And then work your way up to okay. get healthier content, healthier antioxidants and lower sugar. And then it's like less guilt and everything because the main thing is you want to feel good when you're eating. I'm a true believer that like if you're eating something and you're feeling guilty as you're eating it, you're almost doing yourself more of a disservice than if you just ate it and loved it. Right. Even if it was a GMO food. Like right. if I was gonna go eat pizza or if I was gonna go eat dairy, I'm gonna love every single bite of that and I'm yeah. not gonna feel guilty or I'm just not gonna do it. Right. So as long as you're feeling good about what you're doing as well, like that part has to also be considered. Okay. So like as you start to swap out some of these things, like this one, this one is good for chocolate, so I'm gonna leave that there yeah. for you as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm just going to box up a couple of the things that we said we're going to go and then okay. put all this away for you. All right. Did you have questions for me? No. Um, um, oh yeah, eating out. Oh yeah, eating out. Okay. 
eating out, um, the main thing is obviously try to go to places where they source organic or locally for local stuff, right? But yeah. you're talking more like what kind of places do you like to go with your friends when you go out? I like, mean, I'm not picky, so okay. I normally don't pick, but... So you just go lo go with the flow? Yeah. And you want to be able to look at the menu and see what's like the healthiest? Yeah. Okay. So or like have an option or of something on the menu. Okay. Um, and your goal is, okay, so the main thing that you're going to want to look at, the way, like, the restaurants will sneak the GMOs and stuff in, a lot of times it's in the, in the oil. Okay. So obviously staying away from anything fried, it's usually fried in canola or soybean oil or some kind of blend like that. So okay. pretty much you're getting gluten, which is high inflammatory, and you're getting all of the GMOs if you order, um, anything fried. Okay. Um, unless they specifically say that it's not like if you went to True Food Kitchen, I don't even know if they offer fried food, but if they did, I'm sure it's not going to be in GMO. So if you go to a restaurant that's like prides right. themselves on that, but for the general rule of thumb is you want to obviously stay away from fried food for that reason. Plus it's loaded okay. in sodium and stuff. But you want to just try to pick the most like whole food options. Okay that you know the ingredients of. So okay. I'll eat like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. something like just whole food as much as possible. Okay. The main sneaky thing is in the salad dressings and in the oils and in the things that you don't really see. So when I get salad dressings and stuff like that, since you said you like to eat salads and you mm -hmm. like to eat light, I usually will just um, ask for like olive oil and a side of lemon. Okay. And you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. So you can squeeze olive oil and side of lemon on your salad instead of the salad dressings, which are usually loaded with sugar and GMOs. Okay. So, the this the way that it sneaks into your diet the most is like the condiments and the sauces and the extras. Okay. And like in the U.S., we tend to do that a lot, and we put a lot of sauces and a lot of condiments and a lot of <laughs> things on everything. And all of those things is where you're going to have the hidden fructose, the hidden GMOs, the hidden sugars, the hidden preservatives, the hidden artificial flavors, colors, all that kind of okay. stuff. So you just want to be cognizant of like picking like the most whole food options and when it comes to condiments and extras, like trying to maybe ask for a healthy substitute like lemon and oil okay. or sometimes like balsamic oil. Like what kind of dressings do you like? I like the balsamic normally yeah. of some sort. Yeah, ask for like a balsamic and an olive oil. Sometimes I'll ask for like a side of Italian seasoning or something just to put on the salad, you know okay. what I mean? So yeah. it's just... Sometimes though, like in a social set, like I was deemed, you know, the picky eater one. Right. You know, the one that's like the pain in the ass when it comes to ordering. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a part of you that has to be a little bit, and if you're watching this from home, you almost have to be rebellious. Okay. Nowadays, if you really want to stand for your health. Okay. Because nine out of 10 people are not gonna do it. Right. And so you're gonna be the oddball. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to be able to stand for what it is that you truly want in the situation more than, than the, you know. And a lot of times, I, what I've noticed is once I was able to confidently order what I want to order without feeling that way, feeling like burned, other people had sort of picked up and, and noticed that. Even like in relationships, when I go out, I used to be, you know, you know what I mean? Like I was the picky one, but it's like now, like he would notice it, right? you know? And it would be easier for him to order that way too. Okay. So a lot of it is just lack of knowledge. Yeah. And so I always try not to take it personal and say, if they don't know, uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to lower what I know. That's good. Because I wanted to respect my body. Right. And so at the end of the day, I want to be healthy. Maybe they don't know. Maybe they'll learn something from me. Maybe they won't. If they ask why I'm ordering that way, I can share it. Right. But at the same time, I'm going to make the healthiest decision. Okay. So it's really about being your own health advocate and knowing that you're using food as a medicine and a preventative, you know, to be healthy versus buying into that standard American diet okay. that are, that's making people sick, basically. Awesome. So, yeah, the main thing is the, the extra sides and the ingredients and, like, looking to see if, like, foods have been fried and stuff like that. Ask, well, how do you fry the fish if it's a fish? You know, is it in olive oil? Is it steamed? You can always opt for steamed fish or steamed veggies or steamed you know, steamed versions, and then that means there's going to be less of those additives and oils added. Okay. So, any other questions? Um, well, I'm sure we'll come up. So, yeah. alcohol? Oh, alcohol. <laughs> yeah, we're just going. Alcohol is obviously something that every, you know, I, I'll have alcohol from time to time, but I've, liber I've literally limited that quite a bit because I understand how much, like, the liver needs to process my hormones. And when I notice that I'm drinking too much or drinking in just in general, when I cut that out, I'm able to cleanse a lot quicker. Okay. Um, and I'm Do you have, like, alcohols you prefer or, like, um, is there... 
alcohol, healthy way to do it. <laughs> alcohol, alcohol is a poison to your body. Right. And it hinders your liver's ability to detoxify. So obviously the rule is like use it sparingly. Okay. But um, if, you know, so I, I because I am allergic to wheat, you know, so that limits pretty much any liquor aside from like gluten-free vodkas and stuff like that. Yeah. So if I have a cocktail, it's usually like a gluten-free vodka or um, some maybe like a champagne or a glass of red wine or something like that in moderation. Okay. Um, On that note, so like I'm a wine drinker too, I noticed you had some wine in there. One thing oh, that- where's the wine? I didn't see it. It's uh, right in front of your eyes. It's open. <laughs> I like the champagne. <laughs> so I like to follow the 90, 10, I like to follow- And there's ahead. champagne oh, yeah. in the fridge. So <laughs> like, <laughs> if you can go to sources that, cause you ought to think organic as well there, cause you're getting a concentrated right. source of like pesticide, Oh, yeah. I've grapes. noticed it's been like kind of a trend, like the Fit Vine and yes. stuff like coming out. Yeah, so there's companies out there that do that or like wine shipments and stuff where you can get ones where they test the pesticide level, they test the quality of it. Okay. They actually, so you can get good ones that are super low in sugar, because that's another Yeah, that's another. And yeah. then also that they're clean. So okay. if you're yeah. going to do it, if you can shop for those ones, that yeah. would make a huge difference. I'm not like yeah. a everyday drinker but that's so then that's, that's an even easier way yeah, yeah so. that's a really good point because um wine is highly like there's so many chemicals in wine and yeah. so i'm actually really sensitive to that and um, so that's a really good point i like that you brought yeah. that up the other thing that, that is really um i switched to decaf coffee as well because the extra cortisol that's produced from drinking coffee. I actually eliminated coffee just recently altogether while I was going through this cleanse to lose extra weight and balance hormones and stuff again, um, just because I like to maintain balance and maintain, um, because it does spike our cortisol levels, which tends to then set the whole spiraling thing in motion as far as um, the cortisol is a hormone, Okay. basically. So um, coffee, and then well, I, the reason I mentioned that was because decaf coffee, if you're watching this, is actually highly toxic and has a lot of chemicals in the caffeine extraction process so do you drink coffee mm -hmm. okay do you drink decaf no okay if you're watching when i accidentally buy it okay. which i just recently did okay well if you did that so you bought decaf coffee so if you're watching this is one where you know decaf can be decaf is highly uses a lot of chemicals to extract the caffeine and there's still caffeine in decaf oh, okay. and it's 60 milligrams of coffee or 60 milligrams of caffeine versus like 220. Oh, okay. so you still get caffeine it's just not as much um, but if you have to, you have to get like a water processed coffee in order to avoid the extra toxins. And I really love that point that you made about the wine too, because I do like a glass of red wine and stuff like that and avoiding the extra toxins on that is key. Oh, these go in the fridge. Yeah. You, you can just leave it. You're good. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Any yes. other questions? No, I think you did really good. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm going to send you a copy of Megan's cookbook. And uh, the Dirty Dozen list, the Clean 15 list, yes. and a little shopping guide that sort of rehashes because there's so much more than to know than what we actually covered. Right. And you just base it off of sort of your kitchen. Right. So it's going to be like a little shopping guide okay. that you can sort of use when you go to the grocery store to help identify awesome. the healthy sources. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Perfect. So I hope you guys found that interesting. Aubrey, I hope she got a lot of value from it. I think she did. And... I think you can see like even someone that's already pretty much eating clean, she rated herself as a seven and she was probably a cleaner eater than a lot of people um, just, just in general because she was really making an effort to try to eat healthier but there were so many different things in there that we found that were inhibiting her goals which specifically for Aubrey was to lose stubborn weight and to not have that working against her when she's already doing so much in the gym and so much for her physical health. So I hope um, she found that of value. I'm gonna be following up with her. And if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. If you're watching this on Facebook or if you're watching this on Instagram, shoot me a DM. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, Sarah Rose TV, leave a comment. I answer all of my comments direct. And if you're interested in applying and you live in the Phoenix or Scottsdale area for the next uh, makeover, go ahead and fill out the application because I'll be selecting one soon.